Hello and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. Uh, I'm joined by two guests today, uh, Matt just to my left and Nathan to my far left. Uh, yeah, say hello guys. Hello guys. Hello guys. Yeah. Uh, we've just been to see Planet War for the Planet of the Apes and we saw it in 3D. Uh, we didn't really want to see it in 3D but it was the only showing left. Hence these ridiculous glasses, which I'm going to take off now because I don't like 3D, quite frankly. Although, that being said, what did you guys make of the 3D in this? I felt it was a bit of a distraction, to be honest with you. Right. Matt? I thought it was unnecessary, um, but not as distracting as it has been in a lot of other films, mm -hmm. I've found. Yeah, I, I, I actually thought, because of the way the film was shot, it, it, there was a lot of depth in the shots. Uh, I think it worked That's very nice. well. I still don't think it's necessary. It's still a gimmick. It still doesn't add anything to the film that isn't there already by the narrative and the characters. But yeah, like you guys said, it didn't it didn't distract, and I did like I the depth. It, it did distract me, to be honest. With you. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> As for the film itself, uh, so we get the return of Caesar and his his apes, uh, and. This base, basic nut job played by Woody Harrelson, who, who's made it his mission in life to wipe out ape kind. Um, we will be doing spoilers, but not just yet. So we'll let you know when we're going to go into spoiler territory. But just for now, guys, uh, let's just say, give our quick thoughts on the film without giving anything away. Uh, Matt, overall, what did you think of the film? Overall, um, the whole film I was kind of debating whether I was enjoying it or not, and I think I was, but it wasn't what I expected. I, um, I expected a lot more war yeah. than I was um, <laughs> than I actually delivered. Mm -hmm. um, but I did. I loved. There were loads of things I really liked about the film. Um, I loved the way that the apes were portrayed. I loved the way that it started looking at all the different types of apes. Sometimes you see films with loads of extras. Mm. and um, it looks quite impressive whereas if you think about apes being extras you think how can you make that impressive but each one had its own character mm. its own personality even the really ones in the far background I really like that it really um, engaged me into this kind of um, society of apes we were trying to be rooting for throughout the whole film so I did like that I thought it, well, it did feel a little bit slow for me the mm. film especially towards the middle um, I felt I don't know if I came in wanting something different than what this film was trying to do, but I did feel it was a little bit slow and I felt that let it down. Okay, uh, Nathan? I thought it was absolutely stunning, um, beautiful, uh, real depth in terms of um, the digital depth, if you like, of the CGI, but also real depth in terms of the emotions of the characters. Um, you know, you had that moment again when I saw the last um, Apes film where you forget you're watching CGI apes and you're just enjoying the characters and enjoying uh, what's going on on screen. I agree that I think it would, did feel slow for me and I did want there to be a bit more uh, action or a bit more, some, maybe some lighter moments um, at those times when it felt a bit slow. And they did come but probably just not quick enough. Um, but overall I, I did like it and uh, I did, did enjoy it. I, didn't, I enjoyed watching it and as I said, um, it was stunning. Okay, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, for me, I think I, I'll third what you guys said, which is that you know the, the film's called War for the Planet of the Apes, so you do expect this to be a war film, but it, it actually feels more like a concentration camp film. So it's it, it's got a bit of a Great Escape vibe to it in in the kind of second act onwards. Uh, with a little bit of Schindler's List thrown in, I guess, because it is very dark, it's a bit depressing, um, not not in a bad way, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think the trailer's made it out to be this kind of big battle, constant warfare kind of thing, and, and if you're going wanting that, then you may be a little bit disappointed. But, if you're a big fan of the previous two films, and the thing you liked about those previous two films was the character development, and the way they were plotted, then I think you'll be richly rewarded from this. Because the characters, again, it doesn't matter whether they're apes or human, they suck you in. You really, you're rooting for them. 
um, and you feel sorry for them when, when they're hurt or when they're killed. And yeah, I, just to be able to do that for for animals, you know, to and, and not in a Disney way where, you know, oh, we, we make them cute and, and funny. So you, you really, yeah, like, it, it, it's a genuine kind of depth of emotion that you feel for these people. Because um, that, that's kind of what they, that's essentially what they are. They're people. They've, you know, they they have textures of of, of emotion to them. Um, so yeah, I I I really loved it. I I don't quite think it's up there with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, um, but it, it's all it's you know it's almost there. Uh, I I don't either, and I think for a few reasons, the the, the second one had such soul to it. Um, but it also had a real variety. There was those moments where um, there was a bit of surprise action. Uh, there was those moments where you were kind of like, oh, I didn't know, didn't, didn't, didn't know where this was going. With this film, it, it did feel like it was being sewn up a little towards the end. And I think it did feel um, a little bit, not contrived, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Um, <laughs> there is two moments actually that, that did feel contrived and we'll get into them when, when we do spoilers um, but yeah. yeah what was I saying I can't remember uh... <laughs> <laughs> Matt I, I agree with um, how incredible it is that you can make CGI characters who are animals um, and you be so connected to them there were some real amazing close-ups on Caesar in particular where you can just see the emotion in his face mm -hmm. of this CGI character and you just know a hundred percent what he's feeling and you kind of with him all the way there, and I thought that was really um, impressive. For like I said, just a just a CGI monkey, really, to be so involved. And uh, that is my favourite thing about this film was how, in the past films, I found it quite difficult to differentiate between some of the apes, you know, because you're not used to kind of telling apes apart. Are you you're used to telling people apart? But I think even through the character development from this, the last few films and this film in particular. I could really tell the personalities um, apart for these different characters and um, yeah the character development of these CGI monkeys was incredible and it made me really like rooting for them really involved in it that's what I thought. I remember what I was going to say now I wanted some more moments of surprise I felt like the second half of the film um, for, the, for the most part I could see what was coming I could see where it was going there's some wonderful bits of light relief from uh, one of the characters and I can't remember his name um, but an ape who'd been in a zoo is that a spoiler no 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 it's not a spoiler <laughs> I, I, I don't th i don't think like i don't know about you guys but i i didn't notice at any point during the film that them giving his name mm. uh, but no. I, well it's bad ape isn't it he calls himself bad ape yeah. this is the thing because he was he was he was in a zoo and the, obviously the people who ran that zoo called him a bad ape and he kind of he just took that as his name, so he calls himself Bad Ape. So, but yeah, that's. But I, I love those moments of light relief. I didn't want loads of light relief. But what I'm saying is, those drawn-out shots of Caesar, you know, close-ups of his face. We had loads of that, and at some points I just thought, okay, let's let's move on a little bit. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the CGI. You, you've done a wonderful job there, but um, it's almost like you know the uh, the effects guys are going, oh, this is it's an amazing <laughs> job here. We're just going to keep it on this shot for a little bit longer. Um, but I did really like it. I yeah. was a little apprehensive when that character first came on, and it was a, there was a little bit of slapstick at the very beginning, and I thought, yeah. okay, what's how's the tone of this film going to mm. adapt to this character? But I, I think they got away with it because it showed he was um, he wasn't part of their crew. He was like a different ape from a different part that they'd never met. He couldn't speak in sign language. He could only speak in a language that he kind of learnt from other humans. And it showed that they were, one they weren't alone, and two that they the difference it can make from not being in a kind of pack of people, it can make you a bit of an outcast, it mm. can make you a little bit odd, a little bit funny. Mm. And um, for all those reasons, I thought he was a great character, and like you said, I think it was much needed at part of the film. I, but I also think that like in the moments of humour with him, it was never like, it was never at the expense of that character's soul. Like there were some real soulful mo There's one moment in particular actually where, where Nathan, Laughed out. Excuse, excuse my life. No worries. Nathan laughed out loud, and I, I actually didn't find that moment funny until he laughed. I was actually <laughs> there's a, it, it was a, a it was a, it was a really soulful moment. You could see. It. I, I was thinking, 
either this character's gonna cop it here or you know something's gonna happen and I was like so engrossed in this character but I didn't realize that actually yeah this this moment is also funny and Nathan laughed at it and I, I suddenly realized the, was, the expression on the on this this monkey's face and I'm like yeah that, that is pretty funny and and I just laugh it's a bit bit with a with an avalanche but I mean, oh, I right, yeah, more than yeah. that um but but what i liked about him was that like he that that ape was thinking what i was thinking all the other apes they've been together as a pack they've been through loads of hardships together <laughs> they were in, in a war together i've never been in those with the, those experiences mm. and i guess we needed that character for us to for us to have that yeah. little bit of humanity <laughs> we're like hello guys whoa what are we doing where are we going uh, i'm poking now um help me please let's not do that thing that bad thing and get killed please mm. If, if there's any, what, what would you say the the main themes are that are being explored in this film? What, what do you think this film is really all about? <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, deep. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll yeah, go I, first I, then. I can, I can tell you for the second one. This, no, no, no. No, you, all right. You go. Well, for, for me, it, it really was all about leadership. Um, and like we we have these two opposing forces of Caesar and this Woody Harrelson character, and we and we see the ways in which they lead their teams. And as with the other two movies, there's much more to it than just that. I think if if you if you go throughout it, you find loads of different you know, just scenes that have their own little themes. You know, you could you could do a study just on an individual scene and draw a different theme about it. But the, the thing that kind of carries across through the whole movie for me was this idea of leadership. How are you going to lead? And we see the way that obviously Cedar leads with mercy and that, that is his success. That's why he is a successful leader. He he is he's strong but he's merciful. Um, you know, and there's there's a whole moment there in, in which that's pretty much spelled out in dialogue with between him and uh, and Woody Harrelson's character, without being, you know, preachy or, or anything like that. But uh, yeah, for me, that's that's kind of what I took away from the film, th thematically speaking, among other things. I think this one and the last one for me were about humanity, and it's funny because we're talking with, about apes, mm. but um, who has the most humanity? Is it the humans or is it the apes? Um, and this this film and the last film both really do explore that. Um, I think there's also themes of survival. There's also themes of revenge and hatred, mm -hmm. and what do you do with that hatred? You know, as Caesar was battling with himself throughout the whole film, mm -hmm. in terms of the hate he had um, for Woody Harrelson character. Mm -hmm. um, what was he going to do with that? Would, would he let it consume him or not? And again, that's linked to our humanity and um, and the apes. Humanity. Matt, do you, do you want to yeah, I just thought that? that with uh, Caesar's character, well, it's really refreshing to have someone who's quite, um, even though he's a pretend CGI monkey, someone that's quite real. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, these things that he's battling with are very evident and things that we can all kind of relate to. But also that he's not this superhero who's got all these superpowers. You never see him take on ten uh, soldiers in one mm -hmm. go, and he's not this mm -hmm. super fighter. He's just, he's a, one of the pack of monkeys he's but, human but who's yeah, he's yeah. human yeah. but he's got this um he's got this leadership quality that you were talking about mm. which allows him to lead them um in such an amazing way mm. and i found that really refreshing because there was a real um ape manity to him yeah. as a leader there was mm. nothing super or extra special about him apart from what was actually inside he wasn't the biggest ape he wasn't the strongest ape mm. he, he was just um he had the most character mm. Okay, so with that in mind, I, I feel now would be a good time to get into spoiler territory. So if you don't want this film spoiling, uh, switch it off, come back later. Uh, just touching on what you said, the, the, I, th I feel that moment is best displayed, um, or, or that aspect is best displayed in a moment in the film when Caesar stops... Uh, th this this big ape who's kind of he's kind of working for the humans. They call this thing donkey because yeah he, he's kind of defected. He, um, but he, he's he's whipping one of one of Caesar's own, one of Caesar's apes, and he steps up to the plate and he's like you know s s stop it. Uh, and he stands up he, even though in that situation he he has no authority because you know he's caged. He's a caged animal at this mm. point. So. Excuse me. He, know, 
he knows there's going to be ramifications for those actions, but he shows leadership, true leadership, um, not the kind of leadership that you know has to be propped up by 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 a gun, by um, you know being on a pedestal, so to speak, but by actually serving, by serving those that he leads, by by essentially laying his life potentially on the line for for those who who might follow him and, and at that point in the film they've actually turned their back on him so mm. i think he tr shows true leadership by he, he, yeah again that thing about mercy that even though they turned their back on him he stands up he says no this isn't right uh so yeah de de definitely a lot of stuff in there i, I feel why do you think it's called donkey donkey Kong. I think <laughs> it, it wasn't a, a singular term for just him. No, it was a dumb. It was a tape yeah. term for him all, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they used Kong, didn't they, to describe Caesar? Mm. Um, mm. The humans yeah. did. Yeah. When you were talking about um, the theme of the film, I thought there was a theme of sacrifice mm. in the film as well, which we can see in that scene that you just talked about, but also in the bit where, um, I can't remember the ape's name, it was something like lake or tree or mm. rock or something, but the girl character the human girl yeah when she, she goes yeah. into the camp mm. and uh, this ape runs in and starts a fight with another uh with donkey donkey mm. kong and um luca i think yeah luca mm. and sacrifices his freedom yeah so yeah. that this girl who he'd not known for very long yeah, yeah. could then be free and i think there was a lot to say that it was the um and then even at the very end the donkey himself mm -hmm. sacrifices himself yeah, to yeah. save caesar yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think that shows the trickle trickle down effect, doesn't it? That yeah. actually hatred breeds hatred, and love and sacrifice breeds love and sacrifice. So yeah, like like I say, there's so much more in the film. But what do you guys think of the ending? Just quickly. Well, so I I did wonder actually if they would kill Caesar in this film, and I, I'm I'm kind of glad that they did. In a way, because I, I feel like somebody else has to pick up the baton. They're obviously going to carry on making these films if, if, they're, if they're successful. And we need to, to, at some point, get to the point of the Charlton Heston film, you know, mm. in which actually human beings are subordinate to apes. And you can't do that with Caesar because he isn't that character. He is not going to be the character to do that. So you have to get him out of the way in order for a more cobra like character to 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 step up and i think that's probably the direction in which the films will take after this i would, Im I would imagine on its on, on the road to charlton heston kind of looking at the well, statue of liberty but location wise they've kind of gone there haven't they because they've gone to that kind of desert place mm, um, yeah. yeah i didn't um yeah yeah in terms of the ending before the ending if you like so the avalanche mm. and it kind of wipes everybody out very convenient convenient it was yeah, that, that was the second of two that, that i the contrived bits you mean yeah 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 i thought it was convenient but i thought it was actually really cool as well because mm. it looked amazing mm. and obviously the the apes were able to escape from it because they can yeah. climb trees yeah well, that, that, made sense. I, I saw the symbolism in that the fact that they only survived because of their ability to climb trees you know there's, there's say what you want about evolution there you know that actually ma mankind is supposed to be more physically evolved but actually it's that it's that one trait that the apes had that saved them um so i'm worried about this franchise if it carries on because from what i've heard matt reeves isn't going to direct anymore all right Joe. um so some will take over the mantle mm -hmm. but um will you have as much heart as much soul as much humanity in well, the film I, without him? well i thought we got that in rise of the planet of the apes because that's really where this started i think that was all there in rise so either bring rupert wyatt back or you know at least at least have the same creative team be, uh, behind the script for it mm. the other the other contrivance which which kind of stuck out at me like a sore thumb when when it happened again it's only a small thing they find this tunnel this escape tunnel and they literally find it f through sheer coincidence. They're walking and they drop through it. They, they drop through a hole in the ground. Mm. And like when that happened, I instantly thought of the moment in Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, when skids and mud flaps, or what, whatever the heck they're called, 
<laughs> you know, find <laughs> find this MacGuffin. You know, the very the very thing they're looking for that could could change the whole course of, of, of world history. They find just because they're messing about having a fight and they knock a hole in the wall and there it is. And I instantly thought of that moment and I thought, oh man, no, you're better than this, you know? And I also you, thought, hang on, this Woody Harrelson's been on this base for a while now with his with his crew. Mm. Surely they're gonna know there's some like underground passages right beneath their mm. feet. And also there was there was one moment where when the when the apes escape they they do it by they cause this distraction. They throw this turd at this guard's head, and this guard screams like he he's like, "Apes! You know you dirty animals!" And you're telling me no one else on that base camp mm. just pops their head out to see what's going on because literally five minutes after that, not even five minutes, the, the apes get this guy. They drag him underground, mm. and I just feel like with the guy screaming, there would have been a bit more attention to that. That being said. That moment and those couple of contrivances are really my only gripes with the film. Because beyond that, I, I, I loved it. I love being drawn into those characters. I love the way that, that yeah, that they humanise these apes. And Caesar is a really great character. And in one respect, I'm, I'm glad they kind of ended his arc. But in another, I'm sad to see him go because he has been a really great central character. I'm glad that he kind of died the way that he did as well because mm. again like I was saying before he's not this super, superhero character it wasn't a borrow me a moment where it was one arrow and then he's up again <laughs> and then another arrow it was like one arrow mm. into the side of him yeah. and then the resulting injuries from that meant that he just had he just passed away and I thought again that's very real and it was quite um quite a good ending I thought mm. to that character yeah definitely okay um just before we wrap up, do either one of you guys have anything else you'd like to say about the film? Anything that sticks out? No. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll get to our scores then. Uh, just, just to wrap up, yeah, I loved it. Really, th thought it was really great. Uh, not quite up there with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but considering Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is one of my favourite films of the past 10, 20 years, that's quite a lot to live up to. So, yeah, by any other blockbuster standards, uh, you look at the, the summer season we've had, this is one of the best films we've had this summer season, I've got to say. Um, I'd give it a four and a half out of five. Uh, Matt, what about you? Uh, I definitely wouldn't give it a four and a half. I think um, I just it just didn't deliver enough of what I wanted from it. Um, I'd say maybe a high high three out of five from me Ooh. oh that's is that low that, for me yeah that that's, that feels too low for me that <laughs> well there. i agree that it's not as good as dawn um i did think it was just absolutely beautiful and in terms of cgi the way you know the way that uh it's going and uh, it's just phenomenal um, I can sort of compare it to something like Jungle Book, which I just really, really enjoyed, even though you've made the Disney comic before. They had some but, of the same characters as well in Jungle Book. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Easter egg. Going to my score, uh, oh, I'm taught three and a half out of five. Wow. Brian, he's okay. I, I, I do feel that's pretty low, to be honest. I, I, yeah. I saw, I saw the new Spider-Man film today, and... My review for that will be coming up soon. So yeah, I, I I think that's a three. This is this is something else entirely. No, I I I do think yeah. I, I think you're being unfair score wise, but hey ho, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> our thoughts honest, on uh, on War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, if you've seen this film, please do comment below and let us know what you thought about it. And until next time. Cracking. <laughs> oh, miss the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put yours on? Did you? No. <laughs>